lots of people believe that Hurricane Katrina <clears throat> passed by on uh, August 20, 29, 2005. And New Orleans more or less survived it. There was wind damage all over the city. And then the next day, all of these levees breached all over the city and flooded the city, kind of dissociating the levee breaches from the actual hurricane. And that was not the case at all. Now that's how it was kind of portrayed on the news because the news reporters were down in the French Quarter, uh, which is a long ways from the levee breaches. And so the floodwaters really actually didn't get down close to the French Quarter until the next day. And so that's what it seemed like. I was evacuated to Houston and that's what it seemed like to me too, because that's what I saw on the news. But in fact, <clears throat> all of the levees failed uh, as Hurricane Katrina was passing by the city. Right? Uh, so every levee had failed by about nine o'clock in the morning on August 29th. Hurricane Katrina actually made landfall about uh, six o'clock in the morning down uh, uh, <clears throat> where the Mississippi River uh, goes out into the Gulf of Mexico and then about nine o'clock in the morning on the uh, uh, Louisiana Mississippi border uh, made a second landfall so all of these levees were actually broken and starting to flood the city by that time and <clears throat> it's been for a long time it was really difficult to get that out of people's heads and, uh, five year anniversary for example uh, Brian Williams was just about ready to go on the air uh, and he was a very good uh, advocate for the city at that time uh, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> Every year before, he'd say, well, we're at the anniversary of Katrina, and uh, if it hadn't been for the levee breaches that occurred the next day, New Orleans would have been just fine. And I reminded him before he went on the air that they didn't occur the next day. He got on the air that very same day, and <laughs> leading off the teleprompter, and he said, well, we're at the five-year anniversary, and if it hadn't been for the levee breaches the day after, and, you know, it just uh, went on and on. It was difficult to get that out of people's heads. <clears throat> I uh, teach a course on natural disasters. I bring them on this field trip before the midterm. I explain the whole thing to them. I say there's going to be a true-false question on the midterm exam. True or false, uh, New Orleans survived Hurricane Katrina on August 29, 2005, and the next day the levees breached. True or false, the answer is false. You get to the midterm, 50% of the people <laughs> miss it. And I say, preach it, I make jokes about it for the whole rest of the semester. I say the same question is going to be on the final exam. We finally get it down to 25%. <laughs> but, uh, it's gotten better over the years, mainly because all the kids that are coming through now weren't really paying attention and didn't get brainwashed by the TV uh, back when it was actually happening. So uh, that's myth number one. Uh, myth number two is that the Mississippi River levees breached. And that one's a little bit more understandable because when you know people know that we have the Mississippi River here in New Orleans, and we know that the, they know that there's a levee on it, uh, but uh, they aren't aware of the fact that we have hundreds of other levees, mainly hurricane protection levees. Uh, most of those were built uh, uh, after Hurricane Betsy in 1965 to protect the city from hurricanes, and it was those levees that breached. Uh, in fact, all of the levees that breached. Uh, were levees that were built as part of that uh, hurricane protection system after Hurricane Betsy. And they were built on human-made uh, drainage and navigation lines. Okay, no Mississippi River levees breached, fortunately. Mississippi River levees have breached, we would have been probably in a lot worse shape than, than we were, because uh, that would have been a much more difficult levee to repair. Uh, but um, again, that one's a bit easier to understand because uh, most people, when they think of New Orleans, think of the Mississippi River levees and think that uh, that's the only levee we have, but in fact it's not. Uh, <clears throat> third myth is that it was the corrupt New Orleans levee board that built all the levees that failed. Right? Now that's a, a kind of a political uh, statement. Everybody would like to blame those uh, stupid people in New Orleans that are kind of all corrupt. Everyone knows we've got all the, all the politicians in New Orleans and in Louisiana are corrupt because the you know, politicians in New Jersey or California are never corrupt, right? Nope. We only have them here in Louisiana. 
But it turns out that all of the levees that failed were built under the direction and authority of the United States Army Corps of Engineers. They were federal levees. They were not built under the direction of the New Orleans Levee Board. It's not to say the New Orleans Levee Boards didn't have a role to play in it. New Orleans Levee Boards collect the tax from the citizens of New Orleans that pay one-third the cost of building those levees. Again, those levees were built as part of the uh, uh, <coughs> Flood Protection uh, Act of 1965 uh, to protect New Orleans from a uh, essentially a Category 3 hurricane. Um, <clears throat> authorized by Congress, Army Corps of Engineers were put in charge of the project. Every levy that failed was part of that system. So, uh, it's not to say that it was soldiers out here building those levies. They're all contracts. The Army Corps of Engineers is in charge of flood control projects all over the United States, including California. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and dams. <laughs> and dams. Not all dams. No, there's the United States Bureau of uh, Reclamation as well. Uh, those dams. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> they're the ones that built the levee. Right? So it wasn't. I'm not saying that the Orleans Levee Board wasn't corrupt. I have no idea. I'm a geologist, remember. I don't know about things like that. If you want my opinion? They probably were corrupt, but that has nothing to do with it. <laughs> because it was the Army Corps of Engineers that built those levees. Uh, and that's well documented. It's not just me saying so. Uh, there were actually three major studies done after Katrina. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers was in charge of one of them. It's a like, 19,000 page report that I'm sure all of you have read. Um, in fact, I think probably I'm the only one that ever read it. Uh, but even in the executive summary, uh, it does in fact say that uh, they were very poor and that uh, left me some lots of problems with them that uh, shouldn't happen. Now I'm going to try and explain what some of those problems are today on this field. Uh, fourth major myth is that, New or that uh, Hurricane Katrina was such a uh, large storm that it devastated the city, it overwhelmed the city. And <clears throat> that may be true for the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh, it did overwhelm the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It was a devastating storm for the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It was only a devastating storm for New Orleans if the, because the levees breached. If the levees had not breached, then it would not have been nearly as much of a devastating storm for New Orleans. In fact, lots of people think it was a Category 5 hurricane. No, it was not a Category 5 hurricane. It was a day and a half before, but it weakened before it made landfall. When it made landfall, it was barely a Category 3 hurricane. Uh, <clears throat> again, the east side of the storm, which was Gulf Coast of Mississippi, was, was uh, very damaging. But on this side, barely a Category 3. The winds were maybe 120 miles per hour. The problem with that is the Army Corps of Engineers would like you to believe it was a much larger storm because then they're less responsible for the damage that occurred. Uh, lots of people would like to have you believe that it was uh, a much larger storm because it's proof of global warming. That's not the case either. I mean, I certainly believe that global warming is taking place and that uh, hurricanes are going to get probably much worse and maybe more frequent. But Katrina is not necessarily evidence of that. It's an example of what may, may be coming in the future. Uh, but having it be a much more devastating storm is, uh, I think, being used in the wrong way. Uh, um, sorry, they just put me on some new drugs. That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was four. You're, on, you're, you're, you're finishing up four. Oh, five is... <laughs> New Orleans is a city below sea level, usually followed by something like those dumb people in Louisiana and why are they living below sea level. Uh, that's only half true. Uh, <laughs> only half of New Orleans is below sea level. <laughs> when it was first settled in 1718, all of the land currently in New Orleans was at or above sea level. It's only been by uh, humans that uh, half of the city is now below sea level. And the reason being that half of the city was once swamps, and uh, we decided as human beings that uh, 
we didn't like it being swamps. We wanted to occupy that land, so we pumped out the swamps. Uh, by pumping out the swamps, we had to lower the water table. By lowering the water table, we uh, <clears throat> sucked out all that pore space in between the silt and sand grains, and then the weight and the uh, overlying sediment just kind of compacted that pore space, and as a result, it uh, subsided to uh, uh, make some parts of the city as much as 14 feet below sea level. As a result of that, we need levees and pump systems in order to keep the city from flooding when it rains and to keep the water from the Gulf of Mexico out uh, uh, when hurricane storm surge comes in. All right, so 